Hey, it's Maris from Atio, and in this video, we're going to look at condition and delay blocks. Condition blocks determine the path or flow of your workflow, and delays control the timing of each of the steps. There are three types of condition blocks, and we'll go through them one by one. We'll use an example of a form that was submitted to our site to request a call. Since we book calls via email, we can only proceed if an email was provided in the form. So we'll use a filter block to achieve this outcome. A workflow only continues after a filter if the filter criteria are met. In this example, we will be checking that the email address has been filled out by selecting the email address question from the form and then not empty. So if an email address was provided in the form, then the workflow will continue. One of the questions in the form is whether the person filling it out is an existing customer. If they say yes, then the call request is routed to the customer success team. But if they say no, meaning that they're a new lead, the call request gets routed to the sales team. I'll achieve that routing using the next type of condition block, if else. An if else block takes one filter and forks the path of your workflow. For the condition, I will select, are you an existing customer? And select the output as true. If this statement is true and the person is an existing customer, then the workflow will take this first path. In this case, we will first look up that person in Atio, and then once we've found that record, we'll add it to our customer success call request list. On the other hand, if the statement is false and they're not an existing customer, we will create a new deal record and add it to the lead stage. Before I create the record, I'm going to add in a round robin block. This allows you to select the relevant team members, in this case, our sales reps, and we'll rotate through them on each workflow run so that the leads are evenly distributed. Now I can create the deal record and select the pitch user as a variable for the deal owner attribute. So just to recap, an if else block will fork the workflow into two branches, one where the filter criteria is true and another where the filter criteria is false. The third type of workflow block is a switch, which allows you to create multiple logic branches. In this case, we have three branches to our workflow. The first is for leads from the United States, which get routed to Alexis. The second is for leads from the United Kingdom, which get routed to Joan. And then the third condition is not supplied, so we get routed to a default option, which in this case assigns a deal to our third sales rep, Zev. With switch blocks, you can add as many filter conditions as you like to create as many forks as you need in your workflow. Now, let's talk about delay blocks. Delay blocks let you add time delays to the processing of a workflow, which are helpful when you want to set an action, then wait a set amount of time to see if it has been completed. In this case, any time a deal is created, we want Atio to wait one week before it continues on with the next steps of the workflow. A delay block has one input, which is the amount of time that we delay. In this case, we chose one and the time frame week. This specific workflow will send a Slack message to the team if one week after being created, the deal is still in the qualification stage. So we delay one week, use a filter to check the stage, and if it is still in qualification, then we post a message to the Slack channel to ask why nobody has qualified the lead. The delay that we've supplied here is for a fixed amount of time for one week, but you can also use a delay until block where you would provide a date that you would like the workflow to pause until. And that's everything in our overview of condition and delay blocks.